Howdy, howdy there, friends. What's going on? My name is Rabbit, and thank you for joining me for episode number 12 of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1. In our last episode, we made it to Marsh Cave, which I had hyped up for you guys as being one of the most daunting and challenging and frustrating sections of, well, I'm going to say dungeons in general in the game. I was going to say sections in this part of the game, but I think across the board, a lot of people hate this area more so than even later dungeons that you're going to be crawling through. You know, I overprepared. I acknowledged this at the start of our, our last episode, and even as we were making our way through, the enemies here have actually fled from us a few times. So getting everyone up to level 14, maybe maybe really was uncalled for but you know i did what i thought was best so let's continue making our way through marsh cave to see what it is that we can uncover from the depths of this cavern but we did find here a steel plate which i think i want to say i think it's for well i want to say it's for warriors or the fighters whatever they're called armor made of thinly hammered steel oh it actually i did not even realize you could click on it this way and it would show you who could equip it my gosh i need to play with buttons a little bit more and i think menus a little bit more i'll probably do some of that off camera because uh, i saw that there's like a hot button to even bring up memo saves i think there's a hot button to bring up the actual item page my goodness you guys i'm just learning as we go anyway let's see i don't have a warrior i don't have a knight and i do not have a ninja so the steel plate will just be selling fodder let's keep on trucking friends we really don't have too much left to tackle these stupid bats would get out of the way we don't have too much to tackle still in marsh cave we made it through the other two floors and oh gosh well okay i was I opened this episode by saying, oh, you guys, I overprepared and it's going to be so easy. And then these scorpions showed up and they're like, <laughs> hold my beer, slimes. Hold my beer, crawlers. We're going to show this girl what Marsh Cave creatures are made of. And they really are tough. I, I don't want to mislead anyone with my levels. And then you see me going through this and you're like, Pfft. Really, rabbit, this is what you were worried about. This is what you were afraid of. And then you come in here and you get utterly dragged. I don't want that. So recognize that there's balance to this. You can make the mistake that I have made and overprepare, thus completely and effectively removing the difficulty of this dungeon area. Or you can be underprepared and it be hot mess express for you. Blood bones, that's new. I guess we are on floor three. I don't like his face. I think I'm going to kill him first before he messes with me too much. This will be the last of Melvin's level one charges, but I think it'll be worth it to go ahead and cast Dia here. I've, uh, I've kind of been hoarding Tyrone's abilities, but I've not needed them. I'm worried about this guy back here. I don't know if fire is even effective on Undead, but we're just gonna throw it out just so that Tyrone doesn't feel left out. He's only been using, see that crawler, he pieced out. He said, not today, Satan, and was out of there. I don't blame them though. I mean, they've seen what's happened to all of their other friends that have tried to stand in our way. I, w I wouldn't have even, I would not have even engaged in battle with my team personally if I had been the enemy, but you know. They're just stupid monsters. What do they know? Let's go ahead and grab our 295 gil. I don't think there's anything above us, but let's check. I think we can only go down and kind of continue to loop around. It's my recollection. But again, I was transparent with you guys. It's been a minute since I played the original Final Fantasy on the NES, and this is my first time tackling it through Origins. I doubt that they changed the layouts of... Is this really empty? Was someone else here? How odd. Oh, we found a cottage. Well, that's nice. Those are pricey, if you guys do recall. What was it? 3,000 gil per cottage? Woo! It's not a joke. Okay. I really am not trying to be here with you guys all day. I guess whatever, let's just throw out a fire too. We're at the point now where it, it does appear that we're not 
we're not really going to be facing too much trouble with the the monsters and the critters that are here. Now, I'm not trying to get poison. I think that's really what gets a lot of people. I, I guess if I could offer any sort of greater perspective on why this dungeon tends to be such a beast for most people to tackle. There are so many status ailments that you have to kind of contend with as you're, you know, combing through everything. The dungeon itself is not exceptionally convoluted. There aren't even that many floors to it, to be honest with you. So it's a pretty straightforward shot. The problem, I would say, truthfully rests in the types of monsters that are here. The status ailments they dish out to you. Oh, great ooze. That's new as well. We'll just do another fight or two. We're not trying to be here all day. I mean, whatever. Let's just heal up everyone a little bit. I think we're, we're pretty much set and ready, you guys. I mean, we're about halfway done with this floor as well. Again, if memory serves me correctly, and wow, that fire too was a waste, but that's okay. We don't need to hoard our mana charges anymore. We'll get through, head outside. If we need to, we can sleep in one of the cottages that we picked up. The should, well, actually we don't, I don't think we need to use the cottage. I can't remember, one of them does replenish MP. Let's just look, instead of me trying to remember. Okay, so the cottage is what goes ahead and it replenishes your HP as well as MP. I don't think anything else does. The tents, they just give you a lot of HP and the sleeping bags give you a, a wee bit of HP. The sleeping bags aren't great. They really kind of serve their purpose in that initial section where you're at in Cornelia, but beyond that, I mean, they're not that great. But a copper armlet, we did go ahead and pick up those for everyone. I'm just double checking to be sure and make sure that I'm telling you the truth. So again, more selling fodder, much like the broadsword. It's a, a little too late. And the dagger at that. I went ahead and I just purchased it for Tyrone instead of waiting to pick them up here. But if you are broke, then there are some items here that you can pick up and save yourself a little bit of cash. And oh, I don't like the look of this. There was some stuff surrounding that chest. Pisco demons. Oh, goodness gracious. But there's only three of them. So I will go ahead and tell you guys that this is kind of the mini boss fight here. The Pisco demons, they can they can be a problem, but I don't think they will be. I don't remember. They're demons. I guess they're undead. Let's just try Dia 2. We've got three more charges of level three stuff for Melvin, and I'll throw out a fire two. Or let's just try Bolt 2, switch it up. I don't know what they're weak to, but I don't think it really matters. We've got plenty of heals, plenty of mana, plenty of restorative items. I think we're in pretty good shape here. Yeah. And I think it's a wrap for them. So rest in peace, Pisco Demons. Thank you for the gill. It was greatly appreciated. And I will go ahead and help myself to whatever is in this chest, which is a crown. I like the little music kind of adding extra effect to that. All right, so we got a crown. Let's see what it says. Hmm, it does not appear to be here in the normal. Oh my gosh, if I can navigate the menus like a normal person. It does not appear to be in our normal items. Let's check the items. So we still have the loot that we got from Princess Sarah and Cornelia. And if we scroll on over to the crown, it says it's a crown that shimmers mysteriously. Hmm, well, this isn't quite what homegirl Matoya was asking about. Was that king asking for a crown back in the dilapidated castle? What was it called? Western Keep, I want to say, if memory serves me correctly. Well, this might have been what he was looking for. We can go ahead and bring it back to him and just see what his thoughts are. And friends, I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep you with me. We'll throw out some mad deeps to these creatures and We'll make our way back to the top of Marsh Kid. Woo! That was some damage. Again, I guess I can't talk too much crap quite yet. There's still a chance we could get dragged, depending on the enemies we face, the status ailments, if we ran out of mana, if we ran out of items. But I think we can tell we're pretty much good to go. And I'm not sure what's up with the open treasure chest. I'm not sure if the game is implying that other adventurers had kind of ventured forward into the depths of Marsh cave before we got here. I don't know what that's implying, but all right, we're 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 getting dangerously low on HP, not feeling this, but I do appreciate that we were able to avoid the 
do I want to go ahead and do? I will just do a normal fire one on someone. Because I'm guessing we're going to reduce most of the wolves down to like one or two of them. Don't want to have a fire two go into one person. And crap! There's that poison that I was trying to avoid, but it's okay. We'll be sure to stock back up on antidotes and stock back up on other general healing items once we do get back to town. And I will for sure sleep at the inn anyway, just so we're starting off fresh. We won't go straight to Western Keep to hand over this crown to that king. We gotta, we gotta make sure we're prepared. I mean, we might also want some bartering po power with him. Who knows what he's gonna ask for in exchange for it, so. I kinda, I kinda wanna be able to ask for it. Could be a nice little prize like hey dude we went through marsh cave do you know how terrible that dungeon is and i'm saying that with a little bit of a cheeky side eye because you guys have been along with me to see that no this actually really wasn't that bad i probably don't need to ask him for anything but we'll see we'll see what he offers and what he requires and then we'll kind of determine what it is that we want from him. But, oh, crud muffins! The door's locked with the mystic key. Well, yet another place we'll have to come back to. And this one's also locked with the mystic key. Well, that makes, what, the fourth area that we've seen where we can't access all of the prizes yet? Or the rooms, that's assuming there are prizes even contained behind those doors. But we'll be sure once we do obtain the Mystic Key to run all the way back to those areas and gather everything that has previously been inaccessible. There's not been too many. Let's see here. We... What did we have? I don't think Dia's going to be effective. We'll just throw out a normal slice and dice. We'll issue a Fire 2 to follow up on Rohit's Fire 2. And then we'll keep on on our merry way. And oh my gosh. Well, never mind. One was all that it took. But I know we had back in Cornelia. Did I just look at this room or no? I think I did. And then I turned around for nothing. That's okay. Extra opportunities for more fights, more gold slash gill. I'll eventually call it what it is. Eventually. And oh no. There goes my AoE. But uh, ice too. Why not? Let's try muddle. Confuses foes into turning on each other. Have I cast this for you guys before? I don't think I have. I don't think I've even gotten it to successfully execute the few times I've tried it when I was doing my off-camera grinding and heading back to my little secret training grounds. Oh my gosh, it turns them around. That's a little adorable, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need you guys to not miss each other. <sighs> I suppose it is what it is, whatever. And he ate himself, poor thing. I actually feel a little bit bad, because I know how terrible the confusing status effects are. Or I should say confusion or confuse, whatever, what what game you're playing calls it. Oh my gosh. It, it can be a pain in the butt if you have one of your major powerhouses attacking your weakest party member. Oh, feels bad, man. And he killed himself. Okay, well... That's a good outcome for me. Maybe not so much for him, but that's what I'm saying. When that gets dished out to you, it feels so terrible. And I am not, a oh my gosh, all of these bottom doors are locked with the mystic key or from the mystic key. So we will have to come back to basement three or level three eventually. Oh no, I need you guys to stop. I'm not trying to deal with any more poison. It's okay. I'm just complaining, but it really doesn't matter too much, and I think they know it. We won't waste our time with Muddle, it just kind of prolongs it. We will instead issue a swift dose of death to them. We want, I mean, we want to send them to the afterlife as quickly and painlessly as possible. If it's possible, I mean, I guess we just burn them alive. So now that I'm saying that out loud, was that actually painless? Hmm, maybe not. But not my problem. They're the ones that chose to engage with me, so I do not feel sorry for them. And oh my gosh, we have used up quite a few of our potions. I guess unnecessarily so. We probably could have gotten by with using more of my heals. But I was so scarred and triggered even just at the thought of approaching this area. Oh, is this how I get out in? Okay, Bat, I need you to move out of the way. Are you guys seeing this? No, that's the... How the heck do I get out of here? I might have to go further up. Oh, there is one more section up there. I was like, I don't remember how I got down here to begin with. 
Please, miss. No more poison. Ha ha ha. Works for me. But we will get out, friends. I have started to say this a few times, and then I keep just fluttering off on my own little random tangents, as is my way. If you guys have joined me for other walkthroughs, playthroughs, you know, anything in between, I definitely enjoy inserting my random anecdotes, whether they make sense with what we're currently tackling on camera or not. I kind of just let my mind wander, and my mouth often follows pretty closely behind. This guy should go down. Burl's been, oh my gosh. I guess Tyrone's a little done so too. He's like, all right. Oh, but congrats to Melvin with plus five HP, a little bit of extra intelligence and endurance to follow suit. I will clean up Rohit here. Whoops. I mean, I guess I could use a potion, but that's not really what I need. Ah, we'll try to make it with where we're at. I don't want to just keep chugging all of my potions and all of my items here. Not that it matters too much. Okay, there were steps. That is what we took. Let's go ahead. We got to go in here. And I got to remember which door takes us back to the main floor. And then it should just be a hop, skip, and a jump to get outside and then circle all the way back to Elfheim. Oh gosh, I don't know who I ended up targeting because I I get trigger happy, I guess, and I don't like letting my, my hand off the D-pad for whatever reason. But yeah, these skeletons are from way back when. We encountered them a little while ago, so surprised to see them show their faces and not immediately run. I don't know if I can get out this way. And I cannot, so I ran up this way for absolutely nothing. It's all good in the neighborhood. I think we take one of the middle section doors because that has empty chests. I, if I recall correctly, I think all of the rooms on this floor have empty chests, I want to say. Oh goodness, I don't really want to mess with you guys. We'll just dish out some deeps. I'll do a Dia 2, why not? We've got plenty where that came from. Oh gosh, that might have been overkill though. I could have actually gotten away with just having everyone physically attack, but as you guys have already seen, this has been a bit of a cakewalk, which was not anticipating, but I think at the end of the day, it is still worth it to go ahead and set, I think anyway, this team up to be more than likely successful because uh, there was a very strong and potent chance that we were gonna have a bad time coming here. I'll go ahead and do ice too. I don't know if that'll be effective against the gargoyles, but we'll do it anyway, because why not? I don't know about Dia. Are, gar are gargoyles typically considered undead? I don't think they are. Maybe it just depends on the lore of whatever game you're playing. They might be, but they might not be either. I don't know. Oh my gosh, ice two on one, now that feels bad. I love having the AoEs, but when there's only one person remaining and it kind of gets wasted, ah, <sighs> chaps my cheeks a little teeny tiny bit, but it is what it is. Let's get on out of here, it was just a straight shot. So this is what I was telling you guys, that this dungeon's not, I think, dreaded for its layout or, you know, because there are crazy confusing puzzles or just, you know, an overwhelming plethora of puzzles. It's more just that it's a pain in the ass to deal with all the status effects here. Just, it drives you nuts after a while. Well, we'll just throw out fire. I think everyone should, ooh, golly. I don't think so, crawlers. Stop that. Well, it's never a done deal until it's officially a done deal. Oh, I say that and then that guy went down. Well, Tyrone, you can follow up with Burl, I think, between the two of them. If they're going to persist in focusing Rohit, I guess that sets me up to just have Burl go to town on him. I think my Monk will ultimately be what kind of carries us into the mid game. And then late game, I'm anticipating my mages being the ones to absolutely decimate any enemies and foes that are bold enough to stand before us. I'll go ahead and just use my cures. It'll be okay. We'll throw out one more. So we still got two charges in case we need them. 
And that's it for Marsh K, friends. I mean, oh, well. Who dares to be so rude? I was in the middle of my outro for this area. We're gonna have to make short work of them just to show them that this will not be accepted. Oh my gosh. Poor Tyrone, that poison. Well, it'll be okay. Green slimes, you're going down. So what I was starting to say, this concludes Marsh Cave, my friends. We will go back to Elfheim. We'll like sleep, save, we'll make any purchases that we really need to make, sell anything that we need to sell. And when we are ready to kickstart episode number 13, we will go back to Western Keep. I don't know why I keep pseudo spacing the name of that castle it's not like there have been that many areas for us to explore here in in this area or on this particular continent but for whatever reason i guess western keep just doesn't stand out to me and it makes you also wonder why is a, a castle left in such a state of disrepair was it all astos is doing was it a rival castle to elfheim's castle and to Hmm. To anyone else in the area? I don't really know. Maybe we'll find out the answers to our questions once we get over there and talk to that king. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. I wish there was a way we could just teleport our happy little butts on over to Elfheim, but it's okay. We'll make the journey. Oh, we are going to have to run. It won't take too long. Let's just head on over. The fights will be easy. We will spam all of our mana because the first thing we're going to do is actually sleep at the inn when we get to town. Oh, I hate these guys. Whatever, let's throw out fog because we can. Dia's not gonna do anything, but you know what should get the job done? A fire too. You guys, please stop poisoning my team. What a pain in the butt. And normally, if we were really close, I would just leave it as is. But, as I had mentioned to you guys, was it at the start of this episode, or maybe it was in our previous one, that poison, when you're just kind of on the field, it will reduce your HP just down to one health point, and you'll kind of stay there, even though it'll continue to alert you that, hey, someone's poisoned, and it'll have, like, the flashing green screen. But you will not dip underneath... Ah, oh, we'll do another fog. You will not deep dip underneath one health point when you're on the world map. Now, if you're in combat and you are afflicted with poison, it will kill you. So if you have four health points remaining and the poison gives you, I guess, that dot or damage over time of 15 points, then obviously you're going to die. I don't know why they have it set up that way. I guess I've never really thought about it. Why you cannot die from poison on the world map, but you absolutely can and will in battle if you do not remove the effect. Oh, we've got ogre chieftains. Well, good to see you guys. Oh, there's only one chieftain. What am I talking about? We'll do another ice too. I really don't have time for any of you. We're trying to get back to town, rest up. We're tired. We're beat. We're kind of broke in terms of items. We used up a considerable amount of consumables. So I'm not trying to play these games with them. But yeah, I don't know why the damage over time effect reduces you just to one health point on the map, but it can and will destroy your soul in battle. And I think that's the problem with Marsh Cave is you run out of items quickly if you're kind of broke, you know, and you didn't over prepare like I did. You're short on consumables, you're short on mana charges, and then you've got to deal with all these just status ailments. It's a pain. Or it, it's supposed to be a pain. I'd say the biggest pain for me was having to find that stupid crown and deal with those critters standing in my way like the bat block in the door. But, you know, I'd say we're sitting pretty. We came out positively. And we've got more money to our name from the chests that we did open in there. So you do end up with a decent amount of treasure when you go through and comb the depths of the cave. Now, it's not anything for us to write home about because our training grounds awarded us with, oh, just bukus of cash. But we'll take what we can get and it will certainly get used for good. So let's go ahead and sleep at the inn. Hello, kind sir. 
Yes, I will hand you a measly 100 gil for me to use your beds. I still think they're jacking up the price a little bit, but, you know, it's fine. Well, we also, now that I'm thinking about it, we need to be mindful. We've got to find... We'll go ahead and save over this top one. Why not? We're 11 hours and 20 minutes in. It doesn't feel like it. Well, I guess because I did like an hour and a half of grinding on my own. So for you guys, it's not been 11 hours. But even still, it doesn't feel like we should be around 10-ish hours, does it? Does it to you? Maybe you guys are saying, oh, heck yes, Rabbit. It feels like it's been a very long 10 hours with you. Well, I do apologize for that, and I hope that your experience improves if that is the case. But let's go ahead and sell our broadsword for 275 gil. We will get rid of the dagger because we already have one on Tyrone. We have a copper armlet for everyone, so thank you for the 500 gil. And we will sell the steel plate for 400 gil. So that's it for the objects that we picked up. I guess I should have waited to save until after I did all of that. Oh well, it's okay. And we will end the episode by actually going to the consumable shop, buying everything together. <laughs> uh, it'll be a waste of 100 gil, but I'll sleep again on my own just to save. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna just buy, I'm gonna buy 40 of these to bring us to a whopping 50. I'm gonna grab, let's go ahead and have 30 antidotes. We're okay on tents, we're okay on cottages. This gold needle, I don't know about this. I'll get one more cottage. Why not to bring it to an even four? And I think that should be good in terms of us having all the tools we need for what awaits us. So, my friends, I think we will actually go ahead and call this a recording session. We've knocked out quite a bit of the story-based content, and you know me, I love my cliffhangers. So when we do eventually return in episode number 13 of Let's Play Through Final Fantasy Origins, specifically yet again, Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation 1, we are going to go back to Western Keep and speak with that king there, see what he has to say about this crown. Is it his? Does he know who it belongs to? How can we find Astos and have him remove this weird spell that he inflicted on Elfheim's prince? And then, where do we find Matoya's crystal eye? We just have so many questions that require answers, but it will have to wait until our next episode for us to resolve those lingering questions. Until then, friends, take care, be good, and I, your host, Rabbit, look forward to seeing you in a week or two when we do come back to playing more Final Fantasy 1. I hope you are excited about what our other game in rotation will be that I will be revealing here shortly. Ah, I'm really excited about it, so I hope you are equally anticipating with great eagerness what awaits you guys in that frontier. Until then again, friends, take care, be good, and I will see you guys there. Bye!